Hey coders and welcome to episode 5 of our calendar service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about recurring events. So as the name applies, recurring events are those events that happen on a predictable basis. So they could happen say once every Tuesday or once every day excluding weekends. They could happen maybe on the 5th of the month every single month. That's what a recurring event is. So our top eight methods for this video are create event series, new recurrence, add weekly rule, only on weekdays or weekday, interval, times, until, and e get event series. So let's jump into the code and see what we can do. Just like how we needed a calendar to create events, we also need a calendar to create recurring events. So that's what I'm doing right here. In line three, I'm getting calendar app dot get default calendar, storing that into a constant called cal, and now I can use that. So to create a event series, it is the, the method name is very simple. It's create event series. So you can see that we have the method down here with two options. One is with the required parameters, title, start time, end time, and something called recurrence, which is of type event recurrence. We'll get into that in a second. But then you can also include the optional parameter of options, which is a JavaScript object. But this, these options right here are the same um, properties as what we saw in episode four when we were just creating normal events, not event series. So if you want more explanation on what that is and uh, in a deeper dive into what that is, check out episode four or look at the documentation. So let's just select this one for now. So uh, before we start filling out these parameters, I do want to mention just just real quickly that there is a method called create all day event series. So this method create all day event series is the exact same as create event series. However, this is creating all day events rather than just a, a time frame within the day. So you could use this say if you have a big database of all of your employees and they have birthdays in there and then you could just cycle through all those birthdays and create a yearly um, event series that happen on a single day of the year and then it could be all day. All right, well, let's get back to business and let's look at this create event series method. So it takes in a title and we'll just say, lunch with friends. It takes a start time and again, this is a JavaScript date, so let's instantiate it. And we'll say new date 2020. We'll say the first of March and we'll give it a time and we'll say at noon. That sounds like a good time to have lunch. And then, so the end date is going to be 2020 still and March 1st. And let's have it at one o'clock. So 13 for the hour. Again, 13 o'clock is 1 p.m. Great, so now, now we look at this last parameter and it's recurrence. And again, this takes a event recurrence, which is um, something that we usually store in a outside variable just because it's a lot of work and we're about to do that right now. So let's look at our um, event recurrence rules. So let's declare a constant, call it recurrence. And then that will just directly feed into here. We'll say calendar app. And then right off of calendar app, we can access the method new recurrence. So this is going to return for us an event recurrence, which is exactly what we need to put into our create event series method. So let's cr create a new uh, recurrence. And now we can start chaining methods together. What I mean by chaining is that we can just start adding methods to this by using again this dot and then now we have a list of a lot of methods we're only going to look at the weekly rules for now so we can say add a weekly rule and this will create a recurrence every um not every week but basically on a weekly basis and then we can exclude stuff from that or we can add uh, days to that but um there are also method names called like daily rules so this would be like if you wanted to create a recurring event on a daily basis monthly for every month date so this would be like every uh, if you had a birthday you could say every on every date of the year and then finally there is yearly so i'm not going to go into all of these just because that would last tremendously long uh, let's just look at the weekly rule because i think with reoccurring events usually you'd want to create those on a weekly basis i think that's just the most common type of reoccurring event all right so now we have a weekly rule so now let's add 
uh, another method and say only on weekdays. So we can uh, we can use only on weekday, which just takes in one day, or we can say only on weekdays. So if you had multiple days that you wanted to recur uh, every week, say if you had something going on every Tuesday and Thursday, then you could say only on weekdays and then give it the days of Tuesday and Thursday. Let's for now just look at only on weekday. So let's say, let's input a date, and this is going to be a enum of the calendar app, and we'll say only on weekday calendar app, and then we'll select this enum right here, weekday, and let's just say every Sunday. Great, so this is going to be only on weekday of Sunday. So now let's add some more rules. Let's say we wanted to have a um, interval. So let's say interval. And what this means is that how how broad is our definition of week basically that's how I that's how I look at it it's like interval of two that means that we're going to look at this add weekly rule and we're going to broaden that to two weeks so now we're going to apply only on weekday of Sunday but it's now going to be every other week does that make sense so if we had three then it would be only every third Sunday of the week. So now we're looking at a weekly rule, but every three weeks, basically. And then it will have a uh, weekday of Sunday, and that will be it. So by default, it's going to be one, which is basically every week. But for now, let's look at two. So if we wanted to do something every other week, we would have to say dot interval two. Great. So now let's look at another method, and the method name is times. So this means how many Sundays or how many events do we want this to continue for so let's say that you were a consultant and then you had a client and You said all right my program that I consult for I'll give you 10 consulting sessions So you would use this times button or this times uh, method and then you would say 10 right here So you're saying I want this reoccurrence to last for 10 different events so that, that is times, and another way you could do it, instead of saying times, is you could say until. So you could say, if you were, again, that same consultant, you could say, all right, I have something that runs for three months, and so that means that it's going to run March, April, and May. And then on June 1st, it's going to end. So let's say new date, and we'll say 2020. Let's see, June is... Um, I believe that is going to be five and then so the date will be one because we're starting on the uh, uh, March right here so we could just leave it at that and then if we put a semicolon now because that's all the methods that we're going to be looking at for today for the recurring rule then if we hit save and we hit run and we check out our calendar here we can see now we have this event right here, Lunch with Friends, from noon to one. If we check the next week, there is nothing. If we check the week after that, and here it is again, Lunch with Friends. Next week, nothing. The week after that, Lunch with Friends. So good, our interval, at least our interval method is working. That's once every other week. Also, we're getting it only on Sundays. And let's check out if it is indeed until May, or I mean June 1st. So let's look at May 24th. Yep, we have something here. Um, May 31st, nope, we don't have anything there. Now, if we check June 7th, yes, we do not have anything there. So that's good. It is not running past June 1st, which is exactly what we wanted. Great, so that is how to create a recurrence. Put it in here, create that event series. And now it is a event, it's technically an event series, not just a standalone event. So if you ever wanted to get that event and, or that event series and change something about it, say the title or who is invited to it, like the guest statuses or the guest list, say, you would say cal dot, you need to get one of the events. So you would say get event for day. Let's just plug in this day. Just any any of the event any of the events that land on a day, on or any of the yeah any events in the series that's what you need to get, and then you would say let me just pick out this one and then now you get a list of methods that will change the um, or it will get anything about that event. So if we say something like set title, and then this is going to now return 
and um, that's not what we need to do. We actually need to get event series first. Yep, okay, so now this is making more sense. So now, when you get an event, you need to get the event series, and that will return a counter event series, and now what you can do is you can get anything from that. You can say, uh, get color, get creators, anything like that. But you can also say, like, set title, and if you say set title to um, party, party, let's say party, and hit the semicolon, and we're gonna just comment this out. Hit save, hit run. Cal is not defined, that's because we accidentally just commented it out. All right, let's hit run again. And now if we go back into our counter, you can see that we did not get this event, but it changed all of the events in that series now to title party. All right, guys, I hope you learned something in this. This was just as, I tried to go as fast as possible, but there are a lot more uh, methods to learn and just ways of configuring reoccurrence rules. But if you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.